We want our kids to be able to develop a social game plan without being told what to do. Now, this is so important, everyone, because what happens when parents or teachers or therapists start to get nervous and anxious because our kids aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing in the classroom or in therapy or at home? What, what happens? Well, we start getting really chatty. The more nervous we get, the chattier we get. And the more chattier we get, the more we start telling kids what to do. Oh, go sit down, go hang up your coat, get your book, on and on and on and on, all right? And so we get very, very directive. And you think, well, if I don't tell the kids what to do, then they're not going to do anything. And I, that's the point. That's the, the point of today's course. We're going to help kids learn what to do, how to do it, and when to do it without being told what to do. We want our kids to participate and learn with others, either individually or in groups. But our kids aren't going to participate and they're not going to learn if they don't have the confidence to be able to understand that my peers and friends are good sources of information. Confidence is everything, everybody, and that's what we're going to get into in just a little bit. Joint action routines are predictable, sequenced, and repeatable social activities with exchangeable partner roles. Sometimes you take the lead, I follow your lead. Sometimes I'm going to take the lead and you follow my lead. It's gonna be a big part of our strategies in a, in a few minutes. Systematic variation and novelty are built into each subsequent routine. So in other words, we don't keep doing the same routine the same way over and over and over and over again. Oh man, so many of our kids are so, that's why they get so mechanical and robotic looking and, and just, routinized because we keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. So in joint action routines, it really builds in cognitive flexibility within predictability. The theme remains the same overall, but we build in variations. So important when we're talking about these naturalistic routines. Now, these joint action routines can be either a a nonverbal version or a verbal version. At our center, it was very interesting. We would start many of our joint action routines and I would tell our therapists and our families who were in our center, no talking, shh, no talking, don't talk. And they're like, what? What do you mean no talking? Aren't we here to teach our kids social communication skills? Well, how do you do that without talking? Well. If you're talking during these joint action routines, there's a really, 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 really good chance that you're telling the child what to do. We get very direct. We don't know it, but we do. And so with this kind of a mindset or rule of no talking during the joint action routines, what we want to do is we want to focus on modeling and demonstrating and showing the other members in the group what to do. We're in charge, we're taking the lead, but I'm doing it without any words. So that really requires us to think about how to be the lead, how to take the role of the leader or the initiator and give nonverbal information and cues to my partners so that they can follow my ideas and my leads. Later, if you want to put the language in or introduce the language and put it on top of what you've already done, that's called verbal mapping. We'll talk about that in, in a different course. But now we can add language once the child has gotten really good and the partners have gotten really good at reading the room, including your social directives and the cues and information that you've given the other partners. In number seven, we have both teaching and mentoring as part of our instructional strategies. There's no 
question about what sometimes we have to use adult directive teaching strategies and techniques and methods. I know what to do. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you what to do. You do it. You imitate me and I will you know, judge or I will determine how appropriate your action is and maybe I'll reward you for that, okay? So that's a little bit more of a teaching. There's so much more to it, but I'm just generalizing right now. Versus mentoring is that we pull back a little bit on that in direct instruction and replace it more with a mentoring matchup of the formula that I had mentioned before. This is the formula, okay? The slide before, we want to think about when we're looking at social communication, friendship, development, and maintenance, and understanding how to learn. For me and my money, I think we need to maybe orient a little bit more toward the mentoring for these particular types of capacities and abilities. Teaching has its place. I just think when we're looking at social communication, peer mediated, friendship development, I think the mentoring may be something to consider here. Your child demonstrates a contingent action, reciprocal response, social imitation um, of the multiple partners, models, and demonstrations for an extended period of time. That's the important part here, extended period of time. If our child doesn't wait and respond for an extended period of time, then your child is not giving himself or herself the opportunities to learn all the social cues and social information that's going with these and are part of these social models and demonstrations. That's why these kids are kind of flitting around, just they'll pay attention to you and look and then they'll go and look and go, and, you know, but we want the child to be able to extend out that, that, that focus and attention and that waiting and responding reciprocally for extended period of time because if not, your friends are going to, your, your children are gonna walk up to friends, hand them the ball, not know what to do, not know how to play a game unless you're telling them what to do. But to be able to make and keep friends, you have to glue yourself together with your other peer mentors for an extended period of time. Later on, developmentally, we call that conversation. Conversation is an extension of the nonverbal glue. So when we have conversations, that's an extended glue, but we're using words. But now you're ready to take the lead. Develop, initiate, and execute a plan based on the previous models. That's really important. Now, here's the key. So many of us want this number five to be exact. Do what I taught you how to do, and I'm going to give you a 60, 70, 80% score on how correct your actions are. In this approach, that doesn't hold any water. I'm not interested in are you being correct. What I'm interested in is have you looked up looked around one through four now you're ready to take the lead so that other people will follow you how do you know what to do because you've looked at the your wingman and wingmen people wing people and you've developed a social plan based on previous models and demonstrations.